before I start the video, I need to ask you guys something. As April is soon upon us, what you need to know is April's Awareness Month for menstrual disorders, which affect many women or those assigned female at birth. One of the most common and misunderstood is premenstrual dysphorphic disorder, or PMDD. Every month, most women go through what's called a menstrual cycle. It's a natural bodily process, but it can also lead to annoying side effects like premenstrual syndrome, aka PMS. However, for a variety of reasons, your body might not respond well to these changes, and for whatever reason, you develop a menstrual disorder. I myself suffer from PMDD. Think PMS on steroids. Instead of only suffering for a few days or a week, it can last much longer and the symptoms can be much more debilitating. Often, you display symptoms similar to depression or your anxiety begins to spike. Many have gone on to report suicidal thoughts or actions, especially after ovulation, during what we call Hell Week. For some extreme cases, this state can last as long as three weeks before feeling any kind of relief. Symptoms can include intense intense mood swings, anxiety, depression, breast tenderness, cravings, bloating, and sleep problems, which only improve when you start to menstruate. For the month of April, I encourage you to help bring awareness to these conditions by donating to the International Association of Premenstrual Disorders, or IAPMD, an organization that helps individuals that suffer from, you guessed it, premenstrual disorders. They help you find doctors, set up online support groups, and provide other resources for yourself or others. We're teal and honor of Teal Tuesday, and if you or somebody you know suffers from a premenstrual disorder, I have one thing to say. You are loved, you are wanted, and good luck. The coldest night of the coldest year comes right before the spring. Now on with the video. What are you doing with cats in your attic? They're innocent victims in this cow. They have to hide or they'll be put to death. Something you just can't understand. Wow, did not expect this to be a top 10 list, but holy effing cow. Hi, I'm Kitty Monk, and I'm here to talk to you about South Park, or more specifically, Eric Cartman. Again, yes again, he's practically the subject of most of my South Park videos at this point. Like, my main cash cow. Really, how many Cartman videos do I even have at this point? Several, right? No, I think it's an undisputed fact that Cartman is one of the most evil characters in not only this show, but fiction as a whole. Not even just the world of animation, all fiction. And he hasn't even hit puberty yet. That is some talent. Really, it's easier to name the crimes he hasn't committed. He's murdered, tried to genocide entire groups of people, even committed assaults considering the episode Butter Sucks. Strangely, despite all of this, Kermit has an ounce or two of humanity trapped beneath all those big bones. No, really, I'm dead serious. This is not an April Fool's video. I don't think I'm gonna make one, honestly. Gotta see how things go. I might be kind of busy that day. Out of curiosity, I started to think of certain episodes where Cartman is nice or does a good deed. Not for some kind of a reward, not for a taste of moral dessert, but simply because he wanted to help people who were in him. To my surprise, there were a few. However, I knew there was more I was missing, and I put a message out to you guys. Turns out, there were more than a few. Eh, the show has 300 plus episodes. Honestly, I thought this video was gonna be one of my standard 30 to 40 minute type deals where I run down a couple of episodes. Not a top 10 list, but I was dead wrong. So we're gonna look at the top 10 nicest things Cartman has done overall. We'll take into account stuff like the intent, his feelings towards the matter, etc. But like usual, we're gonna start off with honorable mentions. I tried to have all the Jews exterminated last spring. Uh, oh yeah, and there's this one kid whose parents I had killed and then made into chili which I fed to the kid. Unlike my first top 10 list, this time around, there will only be one entry. This intro is long enough as is. Some of you suggested I include the episode, The Death of Eric Cartman. In the episode, the boys tire of Cartman and decide that as a raging narcissist, they must permanently ignore him. Stan! Stan, it's me, Eric! Kenny! Kenny, you want 50 cents? Look at me, Kyle, I'm right here! Due to a series of unfortunate events, he thinks he died. <laughs> what is that kid doing? 
I, I don't know, just ignore him. Because of flawed reasons, nobody told Butters. Meaning Butters thinks Cartman is a ghost caught between two realms. How do you know you're not supposed to go to, you know, heck? I'm not going to heck, Butters. I'm not black, all right? Okay, then. Butters believes that Cartman has unfinished business in the human world, and that by making peace with those around him, he will be able to pass on. When I implied I was making this video, some people wanted me to use this episode. After all, Cartman does a series of good deeds, such as giving everybody he wronged fruit baskets, and he even records a song explaining it. Oh, I can't play it though. He even gives a pretty touching speech to Leanne, which honestly, not gonna lie, seems really genuine. Tell her that I love her. He says he loves you. <laughs> oh, that's so nice. And at the end of the episode, he did help a Red Cross that was getting robbed. And probably one of my favorite all-time Cartman moments. I'm so confused! The reason it's an honorable mention and not on the main list is because of intent. Something major I took into consideration for all of these entries. Cartman did none of this out of pure altruism. Besides, the whole reason he's being ignored is because he committed a selfish, petty act. Eating the skin off of every piece of KFC chicken. Skin's the best part. Well, I gotta go home, guys. I'm gonna sit on the toilet and read comic books. Sickening. Really, in this episode, Cartman is like a well-fed, big-boned version of Tahani from The Good Place. You're supposed to do good things because you're good, not because you're seeking moral dessert. Exactly, Jen. However, I do love how he treated Butters. While he does make Butters' his life miserable and makes Leanne and Steven think he has a mental illness, so intense he requires probing, not gonna show that, he does develop a certain level of kindness towards him, sort of. Goodbye, Butters. I must be going, yeah? I'll be looking down on you from time to time. Have a long, fulfilling life, buddies! Sucks it didn't stick. What's the one thing that's more sacred to a man than anything else in the world? Ham? No, not ham, you fat Screw you! It's ham, isn't it? It's no secret that Cartman's most defining trait is his hatred of anybody who is not him, especially towards other genders and or minorities. Due to being Jewish, Jerseyan, and ginger, Kyle Broflowski is normally his main target. However, there is the occasional moment where he will treat Kyle like a friend, several of which made it onto this list. Spoiler alert. Don't worry, Smug Alert did not make it. I hate that episode. Arguably, one one of the earliest is Ike's Wee Wee. Ike is getting a bris, and because of misinformation, the boys presume that his parents will have his private parts chopped off. And mounted over me, fireplace! <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. Cartman helps Kyle hide his little brother in order to protect his fireman, as he calls it. Carbon, not Ike. It's a Jewish tradition! Dude! That is not cool! Chopping off wee wee's is not cool! Honestly, early episode or not, this just feels so weird. I think that if this were a later season episode, Cartman would probably not care. Or say something like, it's his fault he's being Canadian, adopted, and Jewish. And then help the doctor complete the deed. Imagine the Montequilla episode, but with a bris. If you rub his helmet, he spits in your eye. Explains Red Rocket. Originally, this episode was an honorable mention. I was torn. To some degree, Cartman didn't really do anything besides agree with Stan. Yeah, he helped Kyle, and sure, he told off Sheila and Dr. Schwartz, but honestly, that's pretty minimal. Eh, knowing Cartman pretty minimal is actually a big deal, so hey, at least the rest of the list will likely be better. Get back! Get back, six feet, ma'am! Much like Ike's Wee Wee, I was hesitant about including this episode, mostly because I did not exactly know where to place it, especially with other entries. But overall, it is one of the nicest things Cartman has ever done, not just in the newer seasons, meaning it deserves a spot somewhere. In the current events, special, Cartman is one of those people who is actually happy a contagious illness shut down the world, as it means he can do what he pretty much did before, sit around the house like a big old lumpus. Albeit this time around, he isn't forced to go to school or hang out with other kids. Ugh. 
Computer keeps freezing, Mom. Maybe if you were an essential worker, we could afford faster internet. When Leanne announces that the town is thinking of reopening the schools, Cartman is livid. No, I see. There's all this horrible stuff going on in the world, but apparently Cartman's life doesn't matter. While this is going on, the government is trying to find the animal which started the whole mess, that being a pangolin, not a bat. And here it is. This is the pangolin we tracked down in China. The animal that could lead us to a vaccine. Did not realize what a pangolin was until this episode. I think there's one in a film cow episode. Anyhow, if the government is able to find the pangolin, they will be able to create the long-awaited vaccine and try to return to normal. Too bad Randy was responsible for current events due to a bout of bestiality. Really, it's spelled without an A, guys. Stole the pangolin. After all, Sharon can't find out. She will be hella pissed. At school, the teachers don't feel safe coming back, necessitating the task of teaching to the disgraced cops. All right, come on, let's settle down. Now we're gonna do some finger paint, you got that? You're gonna finger paint a marsupial of your choice. After all, this episode came out in 2020. Stuff happens and the students are stuck at South Park Elementary and not allowed to leave for a minimum of two weeks. After all, this was pre-vaccine. Stan, who is already struggling, develops cabin fever and tries to use Butters' condition as an excuse to escape to build a bear workshop. Are you nuts? He has to go out and do something normal. Stan, build a bear is currently by appointment only, and only a maximum party of four can visit at one time. Aw, too bad none of you guys can afford to shop there. Cartman tags along so he can stop Stan, and in the struggle, gets his hands on the pangolin, ready to turn it to shreds. Hey, Chad. For your normal, not mine. I am not going back to school. That's when Stan breaks down and confesses why he acted the way he did. All this because I just want my life back. I just want my life back. Oh, that was me during current events. Hang in there, little baby. There is a light at the end of the tunnel, I promise. Cartman, in response, feels a shred of remorse. And he does this. Oh. Don't forget to get out and vote, everybody. Big election coming up. True, Cartman's actions were for nothing, much like Ike's Wee Wee. But once again, it is the thought that counts. This time, he wasn't being childish. He was willing to give up being a shut-in just to make his friend happy. By doing so, he would have helped not only his close friends, or the school, or even the town, but the whole country, even the world. It's weirdly sweet. Speaking of weirdly sweet... Are you okay? Do you need to, like, talk to somebody? I mean it! People have to die so that better races can live! Okay, Cupid Yee, time to get back inside. Yes, much like the pangolin, it's a recent example, and an even more recent example, but it still fits. I think it's no secret that Cartman himself is delusional, and as a result, it's a common plot point for him to hallucinate. There was an entire episode where, to get rid of his stuffed animals, Cartman, among other things, burns his house down and blames it on Polly Prissy Pan. That's where Cupid Me comes in, being the most common. I don't know, it's confusing. Sometimes he's real, it depends on the episode, okay? However, there are more than a few Cupid Me moments, so it's probably better if I just give him and Cartman their own spot. And Cartman finds love, Cartman enlists the help of Cupid Me to push Token and Nicole together. Of course, he's only doing it because they're the sole black kids at school, and Cartman is one of those a-holes who thinks crayons stay in separate boxes. A place for everything and everything in its place. That's right, Cupid Me. People who are the same belong together. Somehow, for a stroke of luck, they actually work well together. Outside of the gender war, they have one of the most stable relationships among the kids. Thankfully, Cupid Me found the right girl for Cartman. And hint, hint, it's not Heidi Turner. Stop it! 
and tweak X Craig, and yes, you have to say it like that, the town tries to push the boys together, and Cartman gets caught up in it, wanting to help however he can. Did you do it, Kibbe Me? I hit him with my love arrow, and then I peed in his mouth just for fun. <laughs> Meanwhile, Craig's father doesn't accept him. Once again, Cartman convinces Cupid Me to help them out, this time by peeing in his mouth. Just need a little prick of magic. You need to pee in your mouth a little bit. Whatever it takes. Completing this mini trilogy, we get Cupid Ye, which I kind of want to save for a future Kanye West video, meaning I'll just give a broad strokes version here. As Cupid Ye is off his meds, instead of spreading love on Valentine's Day, he spreads anti Semitism. But she ain't messing with no broke Q. He tells people that Kiel, the Jew, his words not mine, runs Hollywood, and that Kiel still the identity of the black Hebrew tribe. The true Jews of Israel are your black ancestors. <laughs> uh. What? People actually believe this BS? How? This is around the same time Stan feels Kyle is deserting him to make TikToks with Token. None of this sits well with Cartman, not because of his hatred like usual. He's just trying his hardest to be a good Christian. We did it. I can't believe we did it. Praise Christ! They'll probably never talk again! And now Stan can have his best friend back. Even if he should be Jewish, according to Jupacabra. I think what works in this episode's favor is we have no idea why Cartman is doing what he's doing. You can basically put any interpretation on him you want, and it'll likely fit. Is he trying to stop Cupid Yi because he truly cares for his friends? Or he had some sort of character development? Or this is too far even for him? Or with a highly critical eye, does he want to be the sole anti Semite at the school? After all, Cupid Yi is somehow better at achieving his goals or getting fellow students to agree with him. Craig's prequel? What were you thinking? Mario Brothers Cal? You seriously can't do better than Mario Brothers? Regardless, because they make it so ambiguous, I feel comfortable talking about it. In the end, Cartman is able to stop Cupid Yi by force feeding him his medication. Cupid Yi! Time to take your meds. And Valentine's Day is saved. But this was not the first time Cartman saved South Park Elementary. No, no, no. Next up, we have... Miss Stevenson, you're having a relationship with this student? Yes, during class time without a hall pass. Okay, I thought about not including this episode for the same reason as the death of Eric Cartman, that being intent. But I still think it fits as one of the nicest things Cartman has done. Plus, it's a favorite of mine, so I might be a little biased. In Miss Teacher Bangs a Boy, Cartman is forced to be the Hall Monitor, or in SpongeBob turns, the Hall Monitor! <laughs> I tried. At first, he isn't happy about the job until he learns what it really entails. Now, if you know Cartman, you know he loves positions of authority. Being a hall monitor grants you massive authority. You get to write up children who commit infractions or take them to Principal Victoria for due process. Case in point, he goes overboard with this position, homaging Dog the Bounty Hunter as the dog and carrying around bear mace, spraying any potential evildoers. Did not realize how big of a homage this was until I got older. However, he does succeed in one area, helping Kiel. Kyle's brother is being preyed upon by his deranged kindergarten teacher, Miss Stevenson, and the authorities are no help because Stevenson is hot. Nice. Nice. What? Carpen doesn't care much either until... They sneak out during class and make out in the hallways! Hang on a second. Making out in the hallways is strictly against school policy. Well, they're doing it. Yeah, well, now it's personal. This, this, Cartman cannot stand for this. If you are going to assault somebody, do it in your own home, not in the dog's hallways. The next time Stevenson makes the mistake of puckering up on a small child in Cartman's hallway, he comes prepared. You're going with Christ! 
You go, dude, this one time. Because of Cartman's actions, Stevenson gets fired, albeit she uses the Mel Gibson defense to get sent to rehab instead of prison. When she gets released and tries to run away with Ike to Milan, Kyle believes all hope is lost, and his little brother is gone forever. With an abusive crazy chick, not so fast, Jew. Sorry, that, I'm sorry, that's your title in this episode? I wasn't hit by Cupid Yee's arrow, I promise. Zug is so angry at Stevenson trying to escape his grasp that he hires a whole crew of bad butt dudes to help track down Stevenson, and they came at a bargain. Only had to pay them 15 bucks, and likely give them a guest spot on A&E. Beth found out they have a room at the airport Hilton. We need to search it. Here's the hotel. Beth, tell you where to pull up here. Stevenson dies, but the day is saved thanks to Kiel the Jew and the Dug. The big, the Dug. Thinking of walking around without a hall pass? Think again. Honestly speaking, the most bacteria ridden place on the planet is the mouth of an American woman. And you're gonna let that near your. <laughs> I promise my mouth is clean. Except when I'm talking smack on YouTube. Metaphorically, it gets dirty. In the episode, The Ring, Kenny gets his first real girlfriend, an older girl named Tammy Warner. Because he clearly did not date that one girl from the Ring Forest episode. The boys don't care at first, as Kenny basically hit the jackpot. He and Tammy have many things in common, like being poor. Actually, that's like the main thing. Her name's Tammy Warner. She's the only girl in school whose family is actually poorer than Kenny's. It's really kind of beautiful, if you ask me. But good for him. However, Butters has asked around and learns that even at such a young age, Tammy is experienced in ways never thought possible. Tammy Warner is bad news. She gave this kid Dave Dorsky a BJ in the parking lot of TJ Fridays. The boys are upset that Kenny is dating used merchandise in an attempt to gingerly break it to him. Cartman of all people leading the charge. Your girlfriend's a s dude. Kenny got his dream babe and wants nothing more than to obtain his first BJ. This time around, the boys are united in helping him. Kenny, you're gonna let a girl put her mouth on your wiener? Do you know how disgusting that is? Girls' mouths are full of germs. But we brush our teeth. I mean, I don't floss, but who really does? What makes this episode list-worthy is the lengths the boys go to help Kenny. In the previous entry, Cartman could care less about Kyle. He just wanted to capture Stevenson because she wronged him. It was one of the rare times their goals aligned. Nothing more. Here, Cartman is actually trying to help his friend, not do something he'll regret. For no other reason than, wouldn't you? After realizing Kenny's purity ring is killing him, they try to go to the Jonas Brothers to protest. This whole thing is a freaking sham! I see what you're doing now! Realizing the band is using purity rings so they have an excuse to pander to Christian audiences. Later, upon learning Mickey Mouse himself is to blame for the situation, and also because he cut the owl house short because it doesn't fit the bread. Uh -huh. They put him on blast in a pretty good scene, exposing him to the masses as an a-hole who uses Christian values to make money. No, why? Because Christians are rich. In the end, it all sort of pays off. Kenny is free from the bindings of the ring and having to watch Grey's Anatomy, and he gets to go to TGI Fridays. And so, as we commit this young child to the earth, let us all be reminded, and it can be caught even if using protection. Well, at least they were looking out for him, and he dies all the time. At least this time, he got to die doing what he loves. Now we know. And knowing is half the battle. Cartman is not the only bully in South Park. We always forget about Chili, mostly because the show does, and she does have a marijuana problem. During season three, there were three episodes that focused on the boys, with the theme that it happens on the night of a big meteor shower. Because they live in Colorado, they actually get to see meteor showers, unlike my city dwelling behind. Each of the boys, plus Kyle and Kenny together, got their own episode. For Cartman, his was the first, 
cat party. Totally party. Leanne is going to a party at Mackie's house. I'm going to a meteor shower party. The number where I'll be is on the refrigerator. Yes, this was actually a full-on episode for Stan, which established Butters as a goody-goody, but we aren't going to talk about it here. As she will be gone for a while, Leanne leaves him with a babysitter, Stan's sister, Shelly. The other babysitters won't come back. I charge $5 for the first hour, 5% bumps every hour after that up to six hours, which enters into golden time. I'm not good at math. How much would that be? Leanne tells Shelly that nobody can come over, and Cartman needs to be in bed by nine. But When Leanne leaves, Shelly is obviously the best babysitter in the history of babysitting. I'm hungry. Ow! Shelly, just a word of warning, Cartman ruined Super Nanny. She ended up in a mental asylum, eating her own waste from a toilet. His behavior was unassessable. Basically, what I'm trying to say is, you're lucky this was season three, Cartman. Contrary to Leanne's rules, Shelly invites her boyfriend over, a dude named Skylar. Skylar is 22 years old, and he's in a band. Nice. Nice. No, that is wrong, and it would be totally wrong if the genders were reversed. Strangely, even Cartman agrees. You know this guy? He's my boyfriend. Right, he's like 50 years old. He's 22. Well, I mean, he did hate Tammy Warner. You know you're screwed when even Cartman hates you. Worse yet, Skylar is mad that unlike Tammy, Shelly, who is literally a 12-year-old, won't put out. Babe, how long have we known each other? Eight days tomorrow and I still don't get any action. I don't know, Skylar. It's just kind of strange to me that you're 22 and all. Skylar, much to Shelly's dismay, hypocrite, invites his bandmates over, and they sound like a cat in heat, getting it on with the rest of the litter. <laughs> That's where the title comes from. Shelly tries to give constructive criticism, and Skylar hates it. Really? I just think your sound is kind of... last week. Well, I'd like to see you do any better. And because Shelly refuses to put out, Skylar breaks up with her. What? But I thought you liked me. If you're not putting out, then I'm moving on. There's plenty of chicks like you out there. What I like about this episode is the weird bond Cartman forges with Shelly. Once again, it's one of those episodes where Cartman's goals align with somebody else's. However, it's weird seeing another side of him. He actually disapproves of Skylar for obvious reasons, and he hates how he's treating Shelly. When Shelly comes crying to him, he doesn't rub it in her face, he actually feels bad for her. Nobody my age will go out with me because I'm too ugly. <laughs> You're not ugly. You don't think so? Well, you're pretty ugly, but you don't have to be dating 22-year-olds. Clearly, you don't know what kind of show you're in. The two get revenge on Skylar by destroying his guitar and throwing him to a bunch of cats in heat. Mm. Oh! Oh! Oh, wait! Oh, what are you doing? Oh, oh you ripped my pants off! Oh. Awesome. On the bright side, I think this episode breaks a lot of typical babysitter episode plots and I like it also for that. Normally, the parent will be like, oh, we're coming home early, in order to force a climax or add more stakes. This does not happen. Cartman tries to call his mom to tattle on Shelly, and she refuses to come home. She'll have to speak up. Damn it! Her boyfriend is here, don't you believe me? Not really, hon. Mom has to go now. I'll be home in about an hour. Wouldn't you if your son was Cartman? At the end of the episode, she couldn't be bothered to deal with everything that's happened, as she's much too hammered. Cat. No, it was Eric's fault. He let these cats in here. Ooh, what a party that was. <laughs> Overall, great episode. It was nice to see a moment with Carmen and Shelly, and be reminded that Hellspawn or not, there are rare times where he does care. Don't you remember that other time Carmen cared enough to help out other teenagers? Man, you royally screwed us all! How do I reach these kids?
Okay, I think I have been pretty open about the fact I'm trying to become an educator. In my first teaching class, literally on the first day, we had to watch part of Ferris Bueller in Stand and Deliver, and we were told by our professor, when you're a teacher, do you want to be Ben Stein or Edward James Olmos? All I wanted to say was, could I be like Eric Carmenes? But I didn't. And eek a mouse, and yes, it's indeed mouse, Garrison has been regretting her transition and leaves class. Principal Victoria tells Cartman in the interim to lead the students in a review for the upcoming test. Well, well, well. Who's teacher now? Everybody passes, mostly because Cartman went in Garrison's desk and stole the answers. Aww. But Victoria and Mackie, who are somehow unaware of this transgression, praised Cartman and won him to sub for a calculus high school class in the inner city. Kyle relishes this. Do you know what those kids are going to do to you? A little middle class white boy telling them what to do? It's true, Cartman. We will eat you alive, Butterball. After all, your clothes are of both the Crips and the Bloods. We won't know if we're allowed to shoot you or not. Cartman does what he does and creates a new identity, this time as a Latino teacher, Eric Carmenes. And I am Latino myself, so I can get away with a ridiculous accent. Hello, students. I'm Eric Carmenes. Your new teacher. Did you know that the teacher from Stand and Deliver was supposed to be Bolivian? Cartman didn't either. Also, we never said this. How do I reach these kids? Sorry to burst your bubble. During the class, instead of teaching the kids about calculus, he teaches them how to cheat and that it's a natural part of life. After all, it's the only guaranteed way white people get away with stuff. Hey, I don't want to be called a cheater. No, no. If you cheat and fail, you're a cheater. If you cheat and succeed, you're savvy. Not gonna lie, when you get to college, regardless of background, that's actually pretty true. Trust me, he's not wrong. Group me exists, so does Chegg. The reason this one is higher on the list is because of the amount of people Cartman helped. In the previous entries, he mostly only helps one person. Except in the ring, where he helped all those other girls, but he only really did those actions to help Kenny. Here, it's a bunch of older kids he doesn't even know. He didn't do this for fame or fortune, he just did it because those kids needed him. My awesome teaching skills is gonna earn me 300 bucks. You're not an awesome teacher. For example, Cartman finds out that one of his students is pregnant and her boyfriend won't help her raise the baby, meaning her life is basically over because she can't go to college. How do I reach these kids? To help, he finds a loophole to enable her to terminate the pregnancy in spite of her Catholic faith. You're cheating nature itself. Eat that little critter in their belly right out of a chance at life. It is at our most challenging times that we must cheat our very hardest. Couldn't he also try adoption? That's what Henrietta did in Bojack. In the end, Cartman is able to help the class, and they go on to cheat their way to the top, even in a setting that's heavily monitored specifically to prevent cheating that requires some skill. They pass the test, and Cartman is just happy they succeeded, like a proud teacher. I reached the speed. In terms of height or schooling, I'm telling you, if you let the steel pass you by, you're making a fetal mistake. Yes, you can. Bear with me. Herman himself is a bad person, if you could not already guess. But I hate to say it, he has a weird fondness for Kenny. True, he treats Kenny the same way he does everybody else, as in making fun of him, especially for being poor. But to some degree, he considers him a trusted f friend. Remember the ring? Even in the future specials, he said he considered himself Kenny's best f friend and was chosen to give the eulogy. But he had so many amazing Jewish qualities. Qualities that I see in my loving wife and my amazing kids that are right over there, over there by the cow. Granted, that might have also been because he was a rabbi, but eh. In this episode, Cartman does something extremely nice for Kenny, or at least tries to. Cartman comes upon a truckload of fetuses meant for a stem cell research facility. As Christopher Reeve, 
and yes, I'm saying his name right this time, isn't around to gobble them up, Cartman takes them and tries to sell them, knowing they'll go for top price, but can't happen to find a buyer. Around this time, Kenny is in the hospital with a terminal, incurable illness, and when Cartman finds out, he is uncharacteristically distraught. In the hospital? Why? They told us he has a muscular disease, and, and that, and that he, he might die. Die? He even hugs Kale. <laughs> Elsewhere, Cartman learns the true purpose of stem cells. Because these cells are blanks, they will often program themselves based on what cells you put around them. Nerve cells damaged by Parkinson's disease or heart tissue of cardiac patients might ultimately be replaced by tissue grown from stem cells. Realizing this could apply to Kenny, Cartman tries to research ways to cure him. For example, to gather more stem cells, he goes to a clinic and actually gets a woman to terminate her pregnancy. A pregnancy she very much wanted and was very far along. I'm gonna have this baby. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that because uh, there's a little boy dying in a hospital right now who sure could use that baby more than you could. Oh. Well, I guess we can always just make another one. Oh, Mark, I love you. Surprise, South Park has yet to make an episode on that one SCOTUS case. This feels like fertile territory. Unfortunately, Cartman finds that stem cell research has been banned because this was back during the Bush administration. But unfortunately, the government has banned stem cell research, and so we'll never know. God, I'm old. When I was born, Clinton was still president. Is stem cell research still illegal? I don't know. Anyhow, Cartman doesn't let it stop him and does all he can to override the ban. Most importantly, he testifies before Congress. All I know is that if there's a chance that stem cell research could save my best friend's life, well, I guess I owe it to him to try and change your mind. Seriously, he needs to go into politics. He did something bipartisan, especially something that involves one of the most controversial political issues. He could have been like the rabbi version of Jesse Jackson. Imagine getting Cal to apologize. Before you say anything, political lobbying does run in Cartman's family. Tragically, Cartman's efforts are for nothing because Kenny dies. Which, shocker, it's not like it's in the title. And as they already did an episode about Christopher Reeve, Cartman instead uses the remaining stem cells to... I put the stem cells from all the fetuses I had next to Shakey's, and they are replicating a new Shakey's. It worked! Now, I know many people say Cartman here was just doing all of this to take advantage of a crisis, but I'd argue he wasn't. Considering the tone of the episode, I think he honestly wanted to help his friend. He probably has the most natural bond with Kenny out of the other boys. I think he would take Kenny dying, as far as he knows this time forever, really hard. Besides, what was he gonna do with a truckload of stem cells? Donate them to science? <laughs> In some sense, I think you could also argue argue that if Kenny lived just a little while longer, he could have had his cake and eaten it too. Don't you see how many stem cells he acquired? He could have cured Kenny and then used whatever was left over to build another Shakey's Pizza. Could have even taken Kenny there. But he just had to be Cartman. Bad kitties. Okay, this is the moment most people point to as the nicest thing Carbon has done. Or at least they do, judging from my comment section. But I don't think it's the nicest thing Cartman has done, period. We'll get there soon enough. In major boobage, the kids in town find a new way to get legally high. Cheesing. Why cheesing? Because it's fun to do. Basically, when cats mark their territory, they spray a little bit of urine. When you inhale it, it induces a state of euphoria. We sometimes sneak out during recess and our friend named goes and gets her cats and we'll just cheese all day long. Ew, I know heavy metal parodies are tempting, but ew. Besides, what if you're allergic to cats? I know, I don't do that. I'm a human. I have a toilet. Gerald, taking after his wife, pushes for a bill to ban cats in the town of South Park to try and curb cheesing. I have written up a bill that would make having a cat illegal in the city of South Park. This is bad news. We all know Cartman himself has a cat, Mr. Kitty, even if he assumed Mr. Kitty's gender. Considering the meteor shower episode, maybe Mr. Kitty is the bottom. And just to respond to comments, no, I don't like pot pie. 
I much prefer Frito Pie and or Shepherd's Pie. They're much easier to make. While the band is underway, a DEA officer comes to his house demanding Mr. Kitty, who Cartman can't provide. I told you, I had a cat, but I had it put to sleep because it pissed me off. Unbeknownst to everybody, Mr. Kitty is safe and sound. Mr. Kitty, you have to live in the attic for now. Here. Write a diary. Maybe that's where he got the idea with Minora. Have you ever seen the movie Schindler's List? Well, neither has Cartman. Because Cartman, for no other reason than the goodness of his heart, starts to rescue cats and keeps them hidden in his attic. Kittens, adults, doesn't matter. It's not a time his goals align. There's no utilier motives. He doesn't charge. And he does it even after he can't keep affording to. Why? Because it's the right thing to do. There are moments where he does try and back out, but his conscience is always there to keep him on the straight and narrow. Well, I suppose I'll get in just as much trouble for four cats as for two. Probably my favorite moment is when an old lady comes to his house as she somehow found out he was hoarding cats and tells him to hide her little kitten. You don't understand, my little Mishka. She has nowhere else to go. Oh. You show such kindness in such darkest of times. <laughs> the sad part is, Cartman doesn't realize he's homaging the Jewish. We can never persecute living beings and force them into hiding. It's wrong. And you don't see any parallel between that and anything else in history. The first time I watched this episode, which was like years ago, I thought Cartman was gonna realize what he was doing and be like, wait a minute, and then at least all the cats are called the cops. But he doesn't. In the end, Cartman's efforts pay off, and once Gerald is exposed as a hypocrite, cats are allowed to return. However, as hard as it is to believe, this is not the nicest thing Cartman has done. I present to you... wanna be alive if it means I have to be like Uncle Kyle. Oh my god. I love you so much. Yep, hate to break it to you, but this is the nicest thing Cartman has ever done. Even if, because of how time travel works, it technically never happened. Let's discuss. In the future specials, the boys break up with each other, but separately keep in contact with Kenny. While all of their futures are bleak, the only person who is living the high life, as in he actually feels satisfied with how life has turned out, is Cartman. Yes, I know. It's been a long time since we've seen each other. I'm doing really well. I'm actually the head of Gespitza Synagogue down in Colorado Springs. He somehow found Judaism, became a rabbi, and married a Jewish woman named Yentl. Yentl. Her name is Yentl. Starting his own family. A Jewish family. Something that Cal does not have. The boys learned that Kenny died trying to stop current events from happening, but forgot his chin diaper and ended up dying from a new variant. The boys try to finish what Kenny started and go back in time. They are all eager to do so, except Cartman. As far as he knows, his future only happened because Kyle wasn't there to bring out his worst self. Which honestly, I hate to say it, but that's really true. Like, it's sad how true it is. Makes for a good cartoon though. He schemes to stop Kyle, hiding his family in the church, which is now run by Father Scott Malkinson, who has diabetes. Really did not know you guys actually liked that one clip. Near the end of the special, Cartman fights Kyle, only for Yentl to get through to him. Don't you see? We have to leave it to chance. I would know better than he is. As expected, the bad future is prevented, but Cartman himself has a negative one. As far as we know, he's the only character who has a bad future. It's so sad he never did anything with his life. Now, yes, Cartman is a horrible person, and this fate is very much deserved. And yes, in the past few seasons, the show has gone out of its way to show that this was not the cruel hand of fate. He brought it on himself, be it forcing Leanne to quit her job and take care of him, or being too lazy to work himself. But to some degree, I actually feel a little sad watching this, knowing the great future he gave up, and everything that came with it. Nobody will ever know of his sacrifice, even if they feel like something's off. At least there was that one future where he was a mechanic and he ran his own time travel company. Maybe he eventually did turn his life around. Probably not. Hey, it's fun to wonder. Well, a 
another top 10 list in the books. I'll make this quick. Happy March. Tomorrow is April, and as the week after is Good Friday, that means we are breaking a rule, my child.